And we start with breaking news first at four. Jeremy Webster is guilty of murder and several other charges. It all stems from a road range incident in Westminster. Webster followed the Bigelow family into a parking lot, opening fire on their car, killing 13-year-old Vaughn hurting his mother, brother, and another witness. That verdict came down around 2 this afternoon. Olivia Young was in court all day for you. Olivia, certainly an emotional day for the Bigelow family. It certainly was, Karen, and it took this jury only a few hours to find Jeremy Webster guilty of first-degree murder and attempted murder. It does stem from that 2018 road rage shooting that injured 13-year-old Vaughn Bigelow, killed, excuse me, 13-year-old Vaughn Bigelow and injured several other people. Now, this trial started two weeks ago. Closing statements took place this morning. Webster pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity, but the prosecution said the crime was intentional and deliberate. He had a mood disorder that began at a very young age and it progressed as it does. And eventually he reaches his 20s and he has schizoaffective bipolar disorder. Mr. Webster is using insanity as an excuse for the cold-blooded murder of a 13-year-old child for his attempt to kill everyone else that was on scene. He knew exactly what he was doing, and he should be held accountable. He is guilty of all the counts charged. Open answer, yes. Webster has been convicted of 12 different counts, receiving the maximum sentence for every count. He was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole for first-degree murder, as well as 48 years each for six counts of attempted murder and 32 years each for four counts of assault. He was also convicted of attempted assault. Now, the mother of this family, Megan Bigelow, addressed the court in a victim impact statement. She said the impact of this crime on her family cannot be put into words. She's happy about this verdict, but says, of course, it does not bring back her son, Vaughn, and that her surviving son, Asa, is still dealing with health impacts from the shooting. Now, Webster's attorney says he does plan to appeal. Okay. I'm recording what we're talking about. I just turned a recorder switch on, and what I wanted to do was introduce myself to you, and I wanted to talk to you about why you got arrested tonight. Okay? Am I under arrest? You are under arrest. Okay. So, uh, number one, I want to make sure that you're okay. I, you haven't probably had water in a while, and uh, have you, when's the last time you had something to eat? Yeah. Okay. Are you hungry? You feeling okay right now? I mean, are you real hungry, or are you going to be okay? Um, I'm gonna, I'm, I got to eat eventually, but I'd rather okay. just deal with whatever stuff we tell them. Okay, great. Well, again, I, I'm a detective here at Westminster PD. Uh, Matt, my uh, partner, same thing. I'd like to talk to you about what happened. In order to do that, I have to sign a form and advise you of your rights so you can talk to me. And I'd, I'd really like to hear your side of what took place tonight. In order to do that, I have to advise you of your rights. All right. Mm -hmm. okay. Have you ever had that happen to you before? Okay. First off, I, I want to make sure I have your name right. What's your last name? Webster. Okay. That's what I've got. What's your birthday, Jeremy? You're 22. How tall are you? You don't know? Just high of six feet, maybe just over. Okay. How much do you weigh? Okay. Well, today's date is uh, June 14, 2018. It's about 8.30 p.m. And, again, you're at Westminster Police Department. I'm going to read this one to you. I'm going to put it right in front of you so you can read it as well, okay? And can you read and write the English language okay? Mm -hmm. All right. How far did you go in school? Did you graduate from high school? I got my GED and started college. Okay. Where'd you go to college? Okay. Well, Jeremy, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read this to you. I've got your name and your date of birth and uh, your age, my name, the date. I'm going to read to you from here down. It says, I'm a law enforcement officer. And I want to interview you or talk to you about a shooting. But before you're asked any questions, you must understand your rights. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to speak with an attorney and have him present during questioning. 
if you cannot afford an attorney, the court will appoint you one for you free of charge. Uh, you have the right to stop this interview at any time. And another thing I'll, I'll tell folks that I chat with is if there's a, anything you don't want to talk about or you don't have to answer questions, you can ask me questions. If I ask you a question you don't want to answer or you don't have an answer, just say, I don't have an answer for that, okay? Do you understand what I just read to you? Uh, is that it? Yes? Yes. Okay. This right here says, I understand my rights have been, have been explained to me. With these rights in mind, I'm willing to answer questions at this time. If that's the case... If you would like to tell me your your side of what happened, and I would like to ask you those questions and hear that, please sign right there. I, sh I should definitely have a lawyer. Okay. And I don't currently have one. Okay. Okay. But once there's a lawyer here. Sorry. Okay. Okay. I can't question you. Uh, because you don't have a lawyer, so we're finished here. And what's going to happen is you're going to go to the Adam County Jail right now. Okay. Okay. All right. Any questions you have for me? Okay. All right. Well, it is uh, 8.39, so we were only here just a couple of minutes. So what I'm going to have a uh, couple officers come back in here, and they'll take you to another area. And it might be a little while before they transport you to the, to the jail. So you'll just have to be patient, okay? Um, sorry, you asked me a question. What did you say? What am I under arrest? You're under arrest, arrest for murder. Monitor? Yes. Stand up for real quick. Okay, it's that way for me? I just want to see something. Clear. Okay. I'm talking about it. Mm -hmm. We do hand swabs and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. It's your help. Okay, Ferris, put your hand on your back for me. Am I, am I wrong on that? Stop it. Okay. Just some photos. All right, those were shot. Yeah. Thank you, Chen. Okay. Uh, you can go ahead and take him. You don't have to take him. Thank you. Okay, Jeremy. I, uh, it's 8.52. It's just a couple of minutes since you were in here. I just went back to the uh, processing room where they uh, photographed you. Uh -huh. And the officer that just brought you in told me that you told him that you wanted to say some things to me and you wanted to talk, correct? That, that guy just now? Yeah. Yeah. The uh, officer in there that was uh, going to take your picture? Yeah. Okay. And I approached you and I said, is this true? Do you want to talk to me? And you said, yeah, I'd like to discuss this. I want to make a statement. Yeah, I at least want to all listen. I want to at least listen to what you have to say, and okay. maybe I'll say something. Okay, well, that's fair. Do you remember the advisement form that I read to you here? I do. Okay, do you want me to reread it to you? Uh, or do you remember and understand what I read to you? I'll be more than happy to read it to you. If you want to read it, you can. Mm -hmm. okay. If you understand that and you're willing to make the statement with me, I need you to sign right there. Mm 
Can you, uh, would you please date that? You know what today's date is? It's the uh, 14th of June. Okay. And uh, I'll write the time on there. It's about 8.53 p.m. Okay, do you need another water while we're uh, chatting here? Yes, please. Okay, I'll get you one. Yep. You want one? Uh, yeah, I'll take one too. Okay. Uh, it's very important for me to hear what you have to say. I, I know there's typically when I deal with people that come in here, there's two sides to every story. And, um, I don't know a whole lot about you. I'd like to learn a little bit about you. And what can you tell me about today? What do you want to tell me about today? I'm just really tired. Okay. Why are you, why are you tired? Always tired. Why are you always tired? Here you go. How long have you been tired? Okay. When I uh, was standing in here, you asked me what you're under arrest for, and I told you. Uh, how did that make you feel? It just doesn't feel real. Okay. How does it feel? A dream. Feels, feels like a dream? Like a really bad dream. So you do feel bad right now? That's true. Yeah. Okay. How, let me ask you this. How do you feel about what happened today? I'm just asking for your honest feeling. You said you had, it's like you had a bad dream and you're feeling bad. Yeah. I just don't know where to start to tell you the truth. Well, we're, why don't you tell me where you came from today or what, what car are you driving today? It's driving the car today. You know, and I, I don't, I wasn't there. So what kind of car are you driving? It's a Corolla. Okay. What color? Black. Okay, Toyota Corolla Black. Is it a two or a four door? Okay. Uh, did you start feeling bad when you were in Westminster today? What? Uh, I guess. What purpose did you have coming to Westminster today? I was work. I was working. Oh, okay. Where do you work? Right now, I'm working for my cousin, remodeling houses. Oh, where's that? All over Denver. How long have you been working for your cousin? A couple of months. What kind of remodeling do you do? Kitchens and uh, basements, whatever. See, were you working with him today? I was working for him, but I was alone. Okay. What time did you come to work this morning to? Work for you. I left Colorado Springs at like seven in the morning. Just trying to get here at eight thirty. Okay. Where is it that you're working, Jeremy? If you don't mind me asking. Uh, it's just like us. My cousin's remodeled the puppet. Okay. So are you working on actual home right now? Yeah, multiple. Okay. So that was at 8.30. Now, when you drove down from Colorado Springs, were you alone, or did you have a work buddy with you? Uh, from Colorado Springs, I drove up alone. Okay. Okay. So how long did you work today? Uh, all day, uh, just a few hours? All day. Okay. 4.30. Okay. Okay. So is that home in Westminster? Is that why you're in the city of Westminster? Mm -hmm. Okay. About where is it? Do you know the approximate address? Not far from here. I know it by. Yeah. 
Okay, is there any main streets that I would recognize? Yeah. Make that main one go down past the uh, gas station on the left. And then there's like a, it's like a nice development right after that on the right. We've got a couple of those. I'm not, I don't know which one you're talking about. We got uh, several main streets up and down here, but that's not all that. Yeah, important, I so. Don't. So you worked uh, all day, and then you got off. So when when you left, uh, where did you go? Back to the phone. Okay. What route do you take when you go home? Whatever the GPS tells me. Cause the oh, okay. So you got GPS on your phone. Oh. Now, do you have your phone with you? Oh, the cops have it. Oh, they do. Okay, I didn't know that. Okay. So the GPS told you how to go home. So do you know what road you took home tonight? No. Once it just got me on a bunch of, like a little bit of place because of how bad the, the highway was. Okay. Was there some construction that you had to drive through? There was a lot of stuff. Okay. Well, once tell me what happened when you were driving. I, uh, before all this stuff happened, why don't you tell me? When? To, when you're driving home. Before you got over there where all this stuff happened, I have some information that there might have been something that happened before all of this, um, maybe some kind of a traffic altercation or some person road raging you or something. Tell me about that. I don't know. Okay. And the, in the, you said it's almost like a bad dream. Tell me the parts of this that you do remember then. Tell me the stuff you do remember. Shouldn't have come to Denver today. Okay. Well, it's real important for me to hear your side, Jeremy. Okay. I truly believe that there's two sides to every story. I just don't know. Do you know why this happened? No. So do you, did, did you just kind of snap? I have no idea what happened or what happened. Now I... I have dreams like this all I just started the medicine last night to stop. What kind of medicine did you start last night? Oh, the name of it. You'll find it in the find it in my hormone for my surgery. Okay. So, what doctor prescribed medicine for you? For the last two months now. The last two months. And what kind of doctor is it? A few months since um, March. Since March, okay. What kind of doctor? He's a psychiatrist. Okay. And he issued you a prescription. Okay, how often do you take this prescription? I just took the first one of that last night. There are a bunch of different ones. But... Okay. What time last night? Right before bed. What time did you go to bed? Midnight. Well, let me tell you what my observations are, Jeremy, is when we do our job, we look into people's backgrounds, and you've never been in trouble with the police. You're working. That's why I ask you, is this something... Is there something that... Anyone who knows me won't be surprised, I'm sure. So that anyone that knows you would be surprised Not if this happened? No, I don't think they would be. Why? Why do you say that? It's like from before this and after this and during. Well, I just don't know where to start. Okay. No, I, I understand. give you the full pitch. I understand that. And I know there's probably a lot. And I, I just I, want to wake up. I, Okay, I've got a lot of time to listen. I've been losing my mind for years. Okay. Slowly. So tell me about that. What makes you say, say that?
just always be like popped in my head. Always been trying to get better, but just popped in my head. I thought I was doing good, but I had it. Thought. Did that lady trigger something tonight? Is that what triggered this? Is it what she said to you or when she got out of her car or what? Well, it matters to me. I, I, I want to help you. Tell me what she did. Tell me what she did. So you, I just, you, it was like I was watching. Like third person. Okay, tell me what you saw from third person. When she pulled into that, that parking lot and got out of the car, what did she say to you? Did she say something to you? Yeah, I'm sure. Okay. And she got out of her car and did she approach you? Or did she just stand by her car? What did she do after the interaction between you and her in the parking lot? Did she just walk away? Or did she raise her arm up and do something? What happened after she started walking away? We've, we've kind of got everything pieced together. We kind of already know what happened. Jeremy, we, we want to know why, and that's why I'm asking you. A bird in the head. Because you're fucked in the head? The snow. I've been. You see, I was, I was doing great. <laughs> when did you start doing bad? You said you were doing great. Was there a point where you started feeling bad? No, oh, everything's been fucked, and I've just a glimmer of hope. Okay. Let me ask you this, Jeremy. Did you did you get the gun before you were kind of? Feeling bad, or did you get it after you were feeling bad? I don't remember any the details of that. So, do you just remember having the gun, and you don't remember where you got it? I don't remember seeing the first person watching a, a gun get shot at people. Okay, go on. So you saw a gun shooting people. That's exactly what happens in my dreams every night. My aunt. When you saw this. Only as the situation progressed that I realized that it was real. When did you realize it was real? When the cops pulled me over on the road. I wasn't sure if I just imagined it or not. Okay. What did you think you imagined? Tell, tell me what you thought you imagined. The devil. Tell me what you remember seeing. So if you're seeing it right now. Are you? You're seeing it play on your head? Yeah. Tell us what happened. What do you see happen? Just explain it out loud. You're not a bad guy. You said you feel bad. So just you know, just bad at that. Yeah. What happened with the gun today? You guys know what happened. We're here from you. This happened. We just have to deal with it. Okay. We're here to listen to you. I know you're a good guy down, down deep. Does does. It just happened so fast. What happened? We weren't there, so 
I know you didn't want this to happen. But it did. So what happened? When you clearly feel bad, so let's just deal with this now. Try. That's the best way to, to deal with this is we just gotta get all out in the open. Okay? You're not a bad guy. I know. Yeah. I know. You just took over. Didn't have any control. What then what happened? We know this lady came out of the car and said some things to you, and you stay in your car. That's what she told us. The lady. They got out of the car. Is that is that true? Did she get out of her car and you stayed in your car at first? Where I can see. What do you see? All I can see is people getting shot. I don't. How many people did you see getting shot? No. More than one? More than one. More than two? What do those people look like? I still get a phone call at some point. Absolutely. Yeah. And will I still get to eat at some point? Yeah, absolutely. I'm just nervous about never being in police custody. Sure. We understand that. Again, it's it's really not a, a big question for us as to what happened. Very uh, important to us to hear hear from you. Okay. So much less to do with, you know. So much less to do. So much less to do with that. Whatever. Uh, what did it? Huh. Can I just ask you a couple questions? Maybe, yeah, and maybe a yes or no. Yeah. What did you do with the gun? I didn't feel like I was doing anything. Okay. Nothing. Well, I, I guess I need to clarify. After you left, what did you do with the gun? Did you leave it in your car? Did you put it someplace else? Part of our concern is if a lot of times people will panic and maybe get rid of a gun, and we don't want a kid to get a hold of a gun and hurt themselves. And if that's the case, there's no law against throwing a gun out the window. If that happened, you need to tell us, or if the gun is in the car. Do you understand how we'd be concerned about kids getting hurt? I shouldn't have had a gun. I should have already been in the fucking room. That's so Well, Jeremy, we see a lot of people that we wouldn't even give a chance to talk to. We see people that are so mean and angry and bad that we don't give them an opportunity to talk to them. Okay, we don't see that with you. Just like Matt I'm so said. tired of everything. I've been so bad, I didn't feel real. Was there? I didn't wake up after. I'm still here. Okay. So what happened? You know what happened? Why don't you tell us? Why me tell us? I want to hear you say it. I just want to hear from you. I don't know exactly what happened. I wasn't there. I just know. What do you what do you what do you know? I can see you playing it in your head. Oh, but yesterday I started taking a, something to help me stop having violent, surreal nightmares that make me not get any actual sleep. And then today this happens, and now it's permanent. 
How did she know? Just follow your dreams. Okay. I'm sorry. Is this, does this match one of your dreams? Every one of them does. Tell me about your dreams. I'm always being pursued and, and like shot at and it's just fairies, but they're always really violent. Usually heroically violent, huh? Tell me what, what that means. Like saving people. Okay. How do you save them? By killing bad people. Okay. But well, they just vary night to night. Okay. Do all of them involve violence? Do any of them involve firearms? Guns? All of them? Okay. I knew this would happen. And everyone in my life knows. <laughs> who in your life knows this? Just anyone and everyone who knows me knows that I struggle with this. And, and, uh, would your mom know it? Everybody knows. Anybody who's met me doesn't take long. Well, earlier, you, you said it was okay if I asked you a yes or no question, and you thought that'd be a good idea. So remember that question I asked you about her getting out of the car? Yeah. Did you agree with that, that she got out of the car first? I don't know. Okay. Would you agree that she said something to you and maybe flipped her arm up in the air? And, I don't know. Did she? I'm was sure she called me something at some point. Okay. I don't know. Okay. I. So how did that make you feel? I don't. I just feel dumb. I don't feel like I'm here. Never. Well, can I ask you another yes or no question? Yeah, you can ask whatever you want. Okay. Well, when you got out of your car, um, witnesses said you had the gun in your hand. And then you walked towards her. Do you remember that? I don't feel anything. Okay. Well, you can not feel anything and still react. So is it safe, safe, or numb when this is happening? Probably a good word for it. Probably a good word for it? Okay. So was it like shooting at something that maybe wasn't real? None of it's real. None of this is Okay. Real. Well, when you were shooting at her, did it seem like it was not real? 100%. Right now, I just hope that I wake up at some point. But I don't think that's going to happen. I got tricked. Hey, let me ask you another yes or no question. When you drove away from there, were you alone? It's alone the whole day. Okay. And when you drove home tonight down whatever route you take when the police stopped, you were were you alone from all day long? You didn't have anybody in your car with you? That's that's right. So you're alone when this happened that we're we're trying to work out right now, correct? Yes. Okay. So you were driving the Toyota Camry when you pulled into that parking lot when the lady came out of the car and was talking with you. You said she might have said a bad word. No, well, it matters to me what you have to say. We know that there was some kind of a, a thing that went on with her driving. Whenever it was, they should have just driven away. And that's probably a true statement, sure. Just wasn't fucking there. It happened. When she was driving, is that what? Going on harmless all the time. But you did have a gun today, right? Yeah. Okay. For sure. Sorry to interrupt you. No. What caliber is your gun? Nine mil. Nine millimeter. Okay. Do you know the brand of the gun? The Glock. Glock. Do you know the model? Nineteen. Okay. Are you a Glock guy? Do you know a lot about Glocks? No. Okay. 
guns. I'm just always afraid someone's out to fucking get me. And Do you normally keep the gun in your car or do you keep it in your house? Uh, oh, I take it with me. But do you do you have the? Uh, I know I do this for my guns. I I have the original box for them. You know when you buy them, I think Glock even has like a plastic hard plastic box. Or do you have the do you have the plastic box for that that you keep it in? Okay. Got it. Did you buy it used? Yeah. You bought it used, okay? Do you remember who you bought it from? Some pawn shop. I'm not sure. In in Colorado Springs. Yeah. Okay. So you bought it from a pawn shop in Colorado Springs. Okay, about a month ago. Longer. A longer? How, how long? Mm-hmm. Part of my job in assessing people who feel remorse and want to help as best they can, even in a, a bad situation, is detail me things that I already know. And then that makes me believe that this person wants to be honest and tell me what I already know. Okay. We don't think you're a bad guy. Sometimes we talk to a lot of people where certain things, and you're telling us that you've had these dreams, and I don't know. I we all drive, and and a lot of people get involved in these traffic things, and those are triggers for a lot of people getting into altercations. What didn't you see coming? Losing my presence in my own body. Okay. What would you like to tell those people um, that you shot? Are they alive? Some of them are. This is your chance to say how you feel about something that happened. It's justified. It's not justified? No, oh, I can't justify anything. I my presence and I'm the old responsible. Do you think that this terrible thing that happened is do you know the difference between right and wrong? Do you give me an example of right and wrong or do you know the difference between what wrong? happened today was wrong. Okay. Thank you. That's a mm-hmm. very okay. Do you think it's something that is against the law? Or is that a stupid question? Up in real life, big time. After this was over and you left, how did you feel? Nothing. I felt like, like nothing. You felt nothing? Did you drive away at normal highway speeds or did something else happen? I think it was normal. Did you think that what you think? it together in my, my head. Getting it together in your head? Trying to think of a long time. It's been like there's it's been this external force. Did you think when you left that the police would be looking for you? No, it's just tough because I I'm just clearly not. Uh, what did you feel when you left? What were you thinking? But that didn't happen. But you knew it did happen. I wasn't sure. What finally made you decide that this was real? The cops pulled me over. I was like, yeah, that happened. So when they pulled you over, what did you think? Well, they don't shoot me. Why would they want to shoot you? Pointing a bunch of guns at me, I don't know. I don't know, but I certainly felt like they were, they were hoping I'd make a move or something. You didn't take your gun out of the car when they stopped you, did you? No. Do you think it went somewhere? Is it in your car because we've got your car? Tell me 
if, if you can, what you remember when you saw the gun going off, what you saw. Huh? I mean, you, you I said, saw things, but I mean, uh, You said earlier that it was like you saw a gun, like third person, and you saw the gun shooting. Well, yeah, like a, like an aperture, whatever it's called, like when your arm's literally disconnected from your body, it looked like. And it just doesn't make any fucking sense. Okay. I'm normally a reasonable guy. I don't. Part of what we're trying to do here is verify what we already know, and then I also want to help you. You're telling me that you have some issues that are going on, and part of our job is not only find out what kind of things happen and you know, help people that have been hurt, et cetera. But we want to get help to people who get caught up in situations. And do you think you need help? I don't understand. Do you, do you want help? I'm sorry. Like, there's no number to call. Like, okay. Well, you've got a therapist that you're talking to. All they can do is give you these fucking drugs and put them all over the place. Wait, there's something there to tell me, you know? Tell me what you saw, Jeremy, when you said from third person you saw the gun shooting. Tell me what you remember. Why is that so important? Because it tells me that you want to be honest with me and tell me what I already know. And I, I think you will. I think you're going to. That's the vibe. So, I just, uh, I wasn't in any control. Okay. You know, so, so, so guilty. And, but, but I just, uh, so you weren't I in never control. decided. So you weren't in control. You felt like you were not in control. I in control. I was watching like it was a dream or a movie. Tell me what the movie showed in your mind. Tell me what you remember seeing as you were over there. Okay, let me ask you this. The guy in the truck in the parking lot. I remember a guy in the truck. You shot at a truck in the parking lot. Tell me about that. We talked to him, and he said that he saw you shooting, and he was in his truck, and he said you guys made eye contact, and he thought the reason you shot him is because he saw you. And he backed his truck up and hit something. Remember that? Yeah, I remember a truck. Okay. Do you remember shooting at the truck and hitting it? Somebody said you shot a whole bunch of times at him. He said that. Was it because he saw you? Is that what the reason was? I don't think there was a reason. Okay. So you just shot at him because he was there? Well, that's a yes or no question. I guess. Yeah, I guess. Do you remember him in the truck? I remember seeing a truck. On the truck, backing up, hitting something. What's the next thing you remember? Do you remember standing in that parking lot where that lady pulled into? I was there, yeah. I remember standing there. You remember standing there? Do you remember walking towards her? But you, you, you remember... After her, you walked a certain distance away from your car, and then you shot a couple of other people. You remember that? Tell me about that. Tell me what you remember about that. About what? About after you shot her, you walked past her, and you went to another spot out there. And you shot a couple of other people. Tell me about what you remember. 
phone number. A lady. I just want to wake up. Sure. You remember her having uh, some kids with her that came out of her car? Yeah, I remember that being. Okay. Do you remember when you walked by one of those kids that was laying on the ground? Mom? When? When? After you shot that lady, you walked past her, and then you were still outside but closer to the building, and there was one of those kids lying on the ground there. And I've got a couple of people who were there that saw you and what you did. How do you guys do your fucking job? Well, what we want to do. Well, how do you... We're trying to help. We, those of us that do this, we stay here because we want to help. And you can help us. I just want the truth and I want you to tell me what you remember when you walked by that kid that was laying on the ground after you shot that lady. Is that a hard one to talk about? Yeah, that's that's fair. If I if I told you what was described to me as happening, would you answer yes or no so you don't have to describe it? I I'd rather hear from you. Or would you rather me tell you what the witnesses saw that happened? Say whatever you want. Well, I'm going to tell you what people have told me. I'm not guessing. I'm telling you facts. But they said after you shot that lady, you walked around and there was a kid lying on the ground and you shot the kid while he was on the ground or shot at him. Tell me about that. I don't remember that. Do you want to know how many people that you shot? You told me it's more than one. If you had to make a guess or if you wanted to tell me, what, what number would you give me? Two. More. Three. More. Four. Yes. Tell me what you remember about the, the two kids. I remember seeing them get shot. Both of them? And I guess you answered my question. You said you remembered seeing them get shot. Can I assume that means both? Yeah, one or two. Okay. Where were they? Were they all outside? No, it was all in that general area of the cars. If I showed you, may I show you a, a just a photograph of that? area here and I'll explain that to you this here is the business right here where you are and from what witnesses said you turned into this parking lot right here does that look familiar to you does that look like the parking lot that you pulled into I'm sure there's only one part on. But does it look familiar to you? Was that where you were today? I'm sure wherever, yeah, I'm sure wherever it happened is where it happened. Okay. Well, this is where it happened right here. I know that for a fact. I wasn't down there myself, but this is printed for me because this is where it happened. And the witnesses said that you drove your car into this parking lot here. The purpose of this is I'd like to know where those where the lady was, where the guy in the truck was, and where the kids were, if, 
if you want to take my pen and just put an X, as you best recall where they were. Oh, the truck was. Okay. Just right on there with like a kind of little rectangle or something. Truck bumped into that wall. Okay. Can you write a, or make a triangle where, or I mean, I'm sorry, rectangle for where the truck is? Okay, great. So you bumped into that wall? Yeah. Now, is that after you fired shots at him? Um, I don't know the, which order okay. everything happened in. It's all very, okay. But you saw him back into there. Did you see anybody get out of that truck? Okay, did you see anyone in that truck? I think there was a guy in it. A guy in the truck? Okay. Okay. Did you see anybody else in the truck? Okay. All right. Before that happened, that's when those two kids were back here. Where let me back up a little bit. Where where did you park your car when you pulled into there and where was that lady's car? Show me that. Because I am told that she pulled in there first. And then you park behind her, is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Okay, can you draw using rectangles again where that might be? As best you can recall? Yeah. Okay. So free thing on my mind is gonna get murdered. Say that again? I'm gonna get murdered. It was like in the middle of the parking lot, I think. Okay. Can you just draw a circle or something where her car was or where your car was? I'm just trying to get reference in my mind from you where you were. We've had witnesses tell us, but I want to hear from you. There. Draw where I can see it. There. That's kind of. I, that's probably a bad color of pen there. Okay. Now, whose car was that? Be? Whose car would that be? Sharpie. Okay. The circle you just drew, is that your car or her car? Um, hers. Her car? Okay. Okay, I'm going to just put her car here. And this right here is the truck. I just want to do this so you can see me doing it. Make sure I catch this right. Now, where would your car be? Kind of behind hers, like. Draw another circle, uh, what behind her is. Okay. Sorry. So this is Jeremy's car. Okay. Here we go. This would be much easier to see. Oh, okay. It's kind of hard to write on that. Yeah, that's not very good. All right. Okay, so tell me about where those kids were, because you said you remembered a couple of kids. It was all in the same area. I think. Same area. Was it all outside? Yeah. Okay, so the truck, the lady in the car, and the two kids were all outside. Mm -hmm. Did you ever go in that building? Did you ever notice anybody looking out of that building when this was going on? question do you think is on our minds is the, the one question that we would ask. I don't know. Why? That's that's the question we want to know. Severely mentally ill and I I always it has so little to do with that. With what happened. Okay, so the so whatever I thought I was doing all right. Okay, this is a yes or no question. When you pulled into that and followed that lady in there, were you angry? At what had transpired between you and her? No, that's 
right word. Did it irritate you? I mean, it, it did something for you to follow her in there. She didn't do anything. Why'd you follow her in there? No, I mean, she did something, but like not. What did she do? Because she told me that you guys had words. And on the highway, there was maybe some hand signals or gestures. She she said that she felt like she cut you off. Mm -hmm. And she mentioned something about, I used my turn signal when she was talking to you. And she says, oh, just leave me alone. I've got kids or something. Tell me what you remember. I remember, I remember she almost hit me. Where? On the, okay. the road. Okay. So is that why you followed her there to talk to her? So she almost hit you on the road. What kind of car was she driving? Oh. Okay. You did something a lot of people do that as far as experiencing some sort of traffic altercation and then no, it has not. Well what does it have to do with? On at any time. Drive so much. Mm -hmm. Knowing what I just told you about four people, well, is there anything you'd like to say to those people? I don't think they give a shit what I have to say. I do. I agree. All right, fuck me. No, we do shit. Okay. Well, what do you, what do you I think? care about what you have to say. Why? I think it's a fair question. What would you like to say to those people? Wish uh didn't have the fucking hat. You feel remorse? Yeah, I mean I wish it didn't happen. Okay. You know the type of ammunition you carry in your gun? Okay. Some guys know the brand or type of bullets or where do you buy your ammunition? Random small store, I think. Um, uh, I mean, I, I've only been shooting a couple times, and I've just bought jacketed brown, ja uh, jacketed brown at uh, Walmart. Okay. Like full metal jacket or whole metal? Is that what you have in your gun today? No, I, uh, I don't carry full metal, or I use personal defense rounds. That's the brand. No, I don't know what the brand is. I just know that they're hollow. Hollow points. What do you know about those? What are they? Why are they personal defense rounds? What what makes them a personal defense round? Uh, I don't know a lot about it, but I know that the ballistics are different. The ballistics are different. Yeah. So you said you shot it only a couple of times before that? Mm -hmm. Where did you shoot it, or do you go to a range, or? I went to a big shooting center, like Magnum Shooting Center in Colorado Springs once. Okay. Where else did you go? That was the only place, actually. Where else did you shoot if you didn't go to a shooting center? That was the only place I've gone. I've okay. been invited to go like into the mountains and stuff, but I haven't gone. Okay. And I know you told me you've only had that gun for two months, is that correct? A couple months? A couple, and I couldn't tell you the exact okay. day. And I know this is something I've asked before, but it's very important that we have the gun. Do you not have it? I haven't looked in your car. If it's in, if it's in your car, you just need to tell me because we're going to look into your car. I haven't done that yet. Yeah, I'll save you guys the hassle sorting through all the, the bullshit. Okay. Probably in the trunk. In the trunk. Okay. Yeah. We're in the trunk. You know. Thank you for that. What else would we find back there? 
That's it. Okay. AA books and tools and fucking work. And then I thought um, quitting drinking was going to solve my, uh, my mental problems. But The medicine, I thought. So you said you've got AA books. Are you in AA right now? Yeah, today is four months. Okay. Okay. So have you been completely sober or have you cheated a little bit? No, I'm sober on alcohol. Um, weed a little bit here and there. Um, okay. But alcohol was going to kill me. So oh, sober on alcohol for four months. Or could have, you know. Sure. I was worried about the blackouts combined with the the realization or whatever the fuck it's called. Okay. How long have you been drinking alcohol before you quit? Four years. How much did you drink? A hundred something beers a week. A hundred beers a week? Yeah, at least. Okay. What else did you drink? What other kind of alcohol? Whiskey. How much of that? Uh, just here and there because things got real out of hand. One time I got... Uh, I completely lost my mind and got into an altercation with the Colorado Springs Police Department and fucked up the walls of my apartment and probably should have, probably should have been, uh, committed that, that day, like three, four years ago almost. I think there wasn't a bed available or something. Did you get arrested for something or did you go to like a detoxification center? Nothing. Nothing. It okay. Misunderstanding. It's a huge drunken shit, like crazy misunderstanding. And you mentioned weed, mm -hmm. and it's legal. Mm -hmm. How often are you doing weed now? Uh, it's like twice a week. Two pounds per week, how much do you use? It's a little bit. Did you have some today? No, not today. When's the last time you had weed? Thursday, right? Yes. All right. Tuesday. Tuesday? Okay. And how long have you been using weed? Ten years. Pretty steady? Or yeah, all day, every day until the AA thing kind of took me down a notch. Okay. How has weed affected you? Hard one. Hard me? That's a hard one. I don't know. Okay. There's a lot, a lot of unknowns, but yeah. I guess you could tell me how it affects you. I, uh, well, turns out I knew what I knew now. I've done it because it was like a Pandora's box that led to just a lot of just altered the timeline of my life in a in a certain way. And what are you talking about, the weed or the alcohol? Well, both. Both, but, okay. But, but uh, the, the weed came first. Um, you think the weed has something to do with these uh, visions that you're having or these nightmares? I don't think so. Um, well, no. Just most people... Uh, I think I think mostly it actually makes people not dream. So maybe there's something wrong with me because I actually dream like vividly. I remember every dream. I wake up in the morning. I have to pinch myself, like or find things to confirm that 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 it's that it's real. And other than that medication that was just prescribed to you by your therapist, like four or something. Yeah, a bunch. Of them. So you take four medications. Was that all that just recently prescribed to you? Yeah. Okay. And you don't remember any of those? Uh, I know. Yeah, I can. I can. Where are where are all of those drugs? In my apartment. We'll find them. Where in your apartment? Uh. On the, like the coffee, right on the coffee table. On the coffee table. Okay. 
other than those four medications that are prescribed to you, are you have you been or are you taking any other medications? My only ones that are prescribed. Okay. Are you taking any illicit drugs like speed or heroin or pill type drugs? No. Weed was my thing and I it's really and like alcohol and any hard drug, but um, yeah, long story short, no, the, the alcohol is the hardest drug I got. Okay. Would you, is it safe to say that today when you got up this morning and until this whole thing happened, you hadn't had alcohol or you hadn't taken weed? Because you said you last had weed Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's it would be correct. I was totally sober today. Okay. So did you feel pretty good when you got up this morning? Oh, all right. I mean, I'm just trying to get through the days. Like, so you got you got a good steady job. Yeah, We're steady good. enough, I guess. Okay, are you making money to pay your bills? Not to, not to keep me in the the rat race. Like, are you? You pay rent where you're living right now? Mm-hmm. Okay, are you up on your rent? Yeah. Yeah, everything was everything was going good. Are you going to... I was rebuilding my life from scratch. I was on the... December, and progressively getting better, keeping everything in check. Okay. Take, take this... Like, I don't know what happened, because there's no logic or reason okay. to it. Like... But I really need to backtrack to what happened today, and I I suspect that a lot of this is in your mind, and it's hard for you to talk about. Is that kind of a fair statement? Do you wish this all would go away? Just wish uh, when I saw that there was no return tractor trailer on 25 today, that I took it as a sign to take a day from myself that I didn't know I needed. Oh well. Did you set out to shoot people today? Fuck no. Fuck no. Absolutely not. Okay. Just happened fast and. Would you? And I'm really just concerned for my own safety at this point. Tell me about that. I should have been committed before this and committed myself or been committed by any one of my family members who know that I'm fucked in the head. Um, or not pass the background check because of the altercation with the Colorado Springs police. And I got the autopilot dream and under. Can I ask you a yes or no question as I go back to what happened over here at this parking lot? Yeah. Witnesses said that you shot the lady, and then you walked past her, and they heard some other shots. They didn't know who got shot, but then you walked by the kid that was laying on the ground, and they said you fired one or two more shots at the kid on the ground. Did you know if that kid was already dead or did you why why did you shoot when he was on the ground I really just don't recall I don't think there was any reason behind anything logic or justification or some switch just went off
I do any. Do you do any and take this back? Well, you're on the path to helping to some degree by talking about this. And anybody that I talk to, I always tell them getting the truth out is the best even in a difficult situation. I'm only asking you for the truth. Yeah, I'm going to give you the truth because I'm exhausted of everything. I'm exhausted of everything. Okay. You just never do that. What it happened? Well, the lady that talked to us about driving your car by you and talking about the traffic situation, she, she described it as somewhat of an altercation between you and her, and you said she almost hit you. Is that... And she yelled something or another, like, fuck you, cocksucker, mother, I don't know what she said. Okay, you said she said some bad words, and those are bad words. Those are bad words. Well, I probably told her to fuck herself, you know, move on with the day. Is that when she got out of the car and was telling you that? I don't know. Okay. Is that what triggered this? Were you angry at that point? Were you upset? Were you... It was just... Tell me how you felt. I didn't feel anything. I just felt not there. I mean, I guess... It, uh... You guess what? Anchor book. Okay, that's a logical answer that you felt anger after she said those words. Oh. It does matter. Because I'm trying to find out the why here. I want to know why. The why is a timeline of my of my life, I think, that led up to this day. And I think it was something I was trying to avoid. Um, I didn't know this was going to happen. But I knew something eventually could happen because of all of these factors at play. But I've been trying to manage it like myself, and I'm not a fucking expert in have you ever uh, pulled your gun out on someone in anger prior to this? So this is the first time? Can we talk about getting some uh, food rails that we've seen? Yes. I'll be happy to do that. My, my question is, after you, why did you shoot the others after you shot her? She was the one that angered you and was calling you dirty names. There's no reason for anyone out there. Just tell me what, what the reason was, though. There had to be a reason. I don't believe there was a reason. Was it because... It just happened. Okay. Was it because the kids were with her and you were so angry and you wanted to punish her? Fuck no. Why do I care about any of the <laughs> The real problem is now, now the real me's back and I'm just like, what the fuck? So you feel like the real you is here right now. You're, you feel like you're in control. Yeah, but now I'm, it's bullshit. Like, my personality stands from the best to the worst of humanity, and I was trying to get it all under control, and then I didn't see any of this coming. It's almost like predetermined or something. I had no fucking control over myself. And, you know, it was predetermined, like, in some fucked up way. That's what I was trying to explain why some external force has been guiding me towards this. 
but not. It just fucking happened. Okay. Do you now, since you're more at probably a more relaxed feeling, you said it's more of the real you right now. Do you now, do you now remember the four people? There was the lady and her kids in the truck, right? Yeah, car, yes. Yeah, I'm sorry, lady and the kids and then the truck, yes. See, I do remember that. Okay. Tell me what you do remember now that you're, it's yourself right now. How many of them are okay? Three are okay. What's your goal here? For you to tell me what I already know. That's my goal. To show me that you're honest, you want to help, and so there are no unanswered questions when I leave. I just want for that not to happen ever again. Okay, I, I agree with that. So you remember the lady and the two kids and the guy in the truck? If you had to tell me in a real quick story about what happened, A, B, C, D, at four people, tell me that right now and, and I won't go there anymore. That's all I'm asking you. A, B, C, D. What's well, going to eat? I'll, uh, I don't know if I have appetite. Okay. I'll, I'll get you a sandwich or a slice of pizza or something. Okay. Tell me just A, B, C, D, and I, I won't address that anymore. You pull into the parking lot. She gets out. She says, it's nasty words, called you an effing cocksucker. Tell me what happened. I just know that I shot the lady, kids, and out of the truck. That's what I saw happen. I didn't feel present. But I know that, that it was me. Okay. So you shot the lady, you shot the kids. You said kids, plural. So two kids, correct? Yeah, two kids, I think. Okay. And then the truck. You described the truck very well to me when you shot it in. You described the lady. Tell me about the kids. A, B, C, D. Just tell me the kids, where they were, and how you shot them. That's all I want to know. It was just in... Just tell me as you're walking how this thing happened. Why? What, what was your question? Sorry. From the beginning, you, you, you know, A, B, C, D, we got four people. Just tell me when you shot the lady. Tell me where you walked and how you shot the first kid, how you shot the second kid, and then um, you said the truck was last. Just tell me how that happened. I'm just wondering what happens next. I'll, I'll tell you, let's get through with that. I'll go get you a sandwich, and then I'm going to tell you what's going to happen, okay? That's all I want you to do is just answer that. Just walk me through it. You said it's now it's yourself. You're grounded. I'm sorry. Okay, you're sorry. Okay. Okay, so you... The lady's out of the car. She's yelling at you. Tell me where you walk and what you do. Again? Oh, 
I, I'm, I'm just. Uh, would would it be easier if you wrote it, wrote it down? I just it's like generic, like. That's okay. I'll take I'll, I'll take it however you give it to me. If it's generic, that's fine. Just just tell me, and we won't we'll revisit that. Go ahead and tell me. Um, so we've noticed. There's a lady, and um, kid meet next to her, I think. And then uh, the uh, sidewalk. Okay. So there's a lady and the kid. The kid's next door. They're on the sidewalk. What next? Well, that, that's it. I want to know what order you shot them. Uh, I don't know. Okay, you shot the lady. The lady first, first, for sure. Okay, how many shots did you fire at her? I don't know. I don't know. Did you fire one? Maybe a couple. I don't know. Okay. And when you shot her, what what did you see her do? Uh, fell to the ground. Okay. What did she say? Nothing. Okay. And then what did you do when she fell to the ground? Uh, well, I don't know what I'm doing right now. Digging my own grave. What? I already know what happened, Jeremy. Uh-huh. What do you mean digging your own grave? What does what does that mean? I'm gonna get put to death, stabbed to death. What cop will kill me? I will fake my suicide. So she falls to the ground. What do you do? Witnesses tell me you keep walking. Walking where? In the parking lot towards her after you shot her. And you said the kid was beside her. Is he the first one you shot? First person or the first kid? The first kid. Yeah, I think so. Okay, how many times did you shoot him? I think, um, I think one. Okay, and what did he do? In the ground. Okay, and then what did you do? Is he the one that you shot on the ground again? I don't, I really, 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 like, uh, really blurry. Okay, well, tell me what you remember. You shot him. He went to the ground. What did you do then? Because the witnesses said you walked from there. It was all, right, it was all within such a short area. I wouldn't call it walking. It was all all around that, just right near her car, in front of it, my car, near there. So you didn't walk very far. So, no, I was just still there. Okay. So after you shot the first kid, what did you do? I don't What did you see? You obviously saw the other kid. What was he doing? Well, I was maybe standing there. I... Okay. Do you remember how many times you shot him? Oh. Once? Probably once. Maybe twice. Maybe twice. What did he do when you shot him? That was the gun. Okay. And what did you do? Uh-huh. Left after that. 
some witnesses that were there said that you shot one of these kids while they were lying on the ground. And I'm asking you if you remember which it was the first one you shot on the ground or the second one you shot on the ground. I don't know. I really don't know. Okay. From there, tell me about the truck thing. Are you walking back to your car at that point when you see the truck, the guy in the truck? Yeah, that had to be on the way out. Okay. Tell me what you what you saw and felt when you saw him in the truck when he's looking at you. I didn't really make eye contact. Okay. Because he said he told us that he was looking at you when he was in the truck. He's probably, he's probably right. He was more okay more aware of the situation than me. Okay. And how many times did you shoot at the truck? A handful. Handful. A few. No. Five, so six. Five, six times? A few, yeah. Okay. And that's consistent with what witnesses said. They said you shot, fired quite a few rounds at the truck. That much sounds about right. Okay. How many rounds does your gun hold? Fifteen. Okay. Did you have any bullets left uh, after this? I don't know. I will find out. Did you leave that same magazine in there? Or did you reload? Didn't reload, no. Did you have a spare magazine with you? I didn't even think of it. But yeah, but, yeah, but no. I you got one in the front seat with you? No, in the backpack. Uh, in the backpack? Yeah. Okay. Where where were, did you keep that gun when, when you pulled it out? Where was it? My glove compartment. Glove compartment? And what do you keep it there? In case, um, it's a couple of unlikely scenarios that really scare me. I'm getting robbed or someone trying to kill you or... Okay. Um, things that I shouldn't have been now. Uh, so for self-defense, yeah. you keep that? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Okay. So you understand... The self-defense laws in Colorado. Do you know anything about what a law means in regards to self-defense in Colorado? Um, some of, I'm not an expert. Okay, tell me what you know or what you believe. Well, there's a there's make my day right. That's, That's correct. That's in your own home. Correct. Can defend against an intruder. Um, you know, Colorado, you can keep it um, loaded in your car. It's a hand. Okay. So what, under the Make My Day law that you're referring to, Give me a scenario when you feel you would be justified to use that weapon. Well, make that I don't. In the house is the most obvious one. Okay. In public, you know, someone's trying to rob you and if they have a gun. I'm not sure, actually, because that's much more. So if someone's trying to rob you or someone has a gun, let's say they're pointing a gun at you, would you be justified in using that? I'm sure. Okay. I so. Okay. I think that's that makes sense. So would it be true that in order to defend yourself with that weapon, someone has to be hurting you, attacking you with another weapon, something like that, in order for you to defend yourself in your home, like you said, to make my day? I'm not claiming that I was defending myself. Okay. What are you claiming? Nothing. I mean... Lost my mind. Lost my fucking mind. So do you in think... In an just a fucking instant. And if the gun wasn't there, I would have been good to go. You know, just find a way to deal, you know, cool down. But, uh... There was just some sort of... Lack of any thinking, like, any 
proper, like, thinking about if this happens, this is going to happen, you know? And so, don't do this. So in retrospect, now that you're grounded and we're seeing the real you, was this something that was wrong? I mean, could you use the Make My Day Law to defend what you did? Is there anything that these people did that would make you use deadly force against them? No, the problem is I'm, it's just me. I'm the, I'm the problem. That's what I've been saying from the beginning here. Okay. Knowing that this happened now, for sure, it, uh, Okay. I'm mostly mostly just thinking about what I should have done. Tell me about that. Well, first of all, I shouldn't have came to Westminster today. Okay. Maybe I should have quit this job a while ago because it's been stressing me out. What else should you not have done? Um, me up there. I don't know. Okay. Well, let me tell you what, Jeremy. Let me go get something to eat. Sure. Okay. You're probably hungry. Yeah. I'll be right back. All right. I'll be right back. You're okay with water, right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. We're all going right now, so. No worries. All right. I go home. Fuck me. See, you're not eating. Are you okay? That's actually what we're eating tonight, so you're getting the exact same food we are. Yeah. Yeah. Jeremy, can I, you mentioned your therapist. And when you were visiting him. Yeah, what, you want to get into the why, it's going to have a lot less to do with the actual Okay. Situation. So if you, yeah, I don't know how much you guys actually care. If you guys want well, to. Anything I'm, I'm talking, I don't. Anything I'm talking to you about, I care. I've been thought since day one. What's your therapist again? Who was it? And when you saw him, or how many times have you seen him? Twice a week since the late February, early March. And are you. Dedicated on those appointments, you always hit them, you don't miss them? Yeah. Since February? Yeah. Okay. What has he told you? What's his diagnosis as to why he's prescribing you? He had to tell you something about what's going on. It's the, uh... I get... I guess I anxiety. Who um makes my 
whatever So he, he said you're you are a working diagnosis. It's just a lot of similar stuff, and I have kind of more um, it's like a stigmatized word, but without the stigma, it's just what it is. So um, I have more psychotic symptoms, like. It might be like a mixture, because there's something that's a mixture, but then there's... What else has he told you? What other terms or medical terms has he used to um, diagnose you? He's, he's been more about trying to, like, so he's been less about the labels and more about trying to just find... The, like drugs that'll make me feel okay. okay. But it's been a roller coaster. And um So what in addition to the drugs, what is what else does he tell you to do? She's like a medicine medication management doctor. There's not a whole ton of dialogue. Uh-huh. Well, I mean, a lot of doctors will tell you get exercise, maybe oh, eat better. Sure, sure, sure. Um, have I taken his advice? Probably not. Um, sure, he said that mm-hmm. to eat. Okay. Eat. Okay. All right. Well, you know, uh, this is important to me. You you brought this up that you're being diagnosed, and I would like. Yeah, well, he's going to be disappointed because uh, probably a couple of things I should have been more honest with him about. Okay, well, I'm not going to judge you. I uh, Part of my job here is to... You, you're the one that brought this out. And I want to... It's all... What? It's all related. I don't... I'm, I'm just not... All right. Well, I'm filling out a form that would give me a record so we can get a full flavor. It sounds like you're maybe not able to tell me everything, and maybe he can fill in some gaps with I these issues. He, I think the problem is I haven't been honest with him, honest enough with him about the, the severity of some of what I'm dealing with. Okay. Has, has he ever told you how he feels about you and... After you leave the office? No. Okay. No. Surprised. No. He's pretty professional. Okay. Okay. Can I get the last four numbers of your social security? And do you know what facility he works for or? He's actually closing his practice, but he works for himself. Okay. He used to be a VA doctor, which oh, is, right. I went in specifically because I thought he could help me with these fucked up dreams and the derealization and just, you know, wanting to die all the time and, you know, uh, what else? I don't know. Okay. Do you know his first name? Chris. Okay. All right. Well, uh, this form here, I want to ask your permission, and I'm going to have you sign it, but it simply says that we're going to try to get those medical records and talk to them. More information that you're providing to me. And uh, what I need you to do is uh, just sign this. Right here. And I've got his name up here. Lines on there to just read it real quick. Yeah, absolutely. I've just been afraid of myself for a long time. Okay. I was been trying to find a, you know, a cure or something. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. No problem. And, it, and we're just getting those records from. Thank you. Okay. The other thing I want to ask you is, uh, 
Do you keep, uh, well, let me backtrack a little bit. You, you were nice enough to tell me that you put the gun in the trunk and you put it in your backpack. Tell me why you put it there. I just didn't know what to do. You didn't know what to do with the gun? In general. Okay. Really hard to explain. Okay, when did you put it in the trunk? Um, I kind of tried to just carry on with my normal day, and within 10 minutes, I wasn't sure if it happened or not. It wasn't long after. I had to go back and finish work. Um, So you went back to finish some work after this? Yeah, I was out originally to pick up our circular. Another thing, if the circular saw didn't die, I wouldn't have fucking been there. I was supposed to buy a new circular saw. Okay. So when you left here, where did you go? Here? Where did I left? Yeah, I'm sorry. When you left here, where did you go? Uh, Lowe's to buy a circular saw. My cousin. Where's the Lowe's? Right around the corner from there. Oh, okay. Do you know what street that's on? No, I'm not familiar with the streets yet. Okay. Did you buy one? Yeah. Would you? What kind you get? I don't remember that. Maybe Ryobi. Ryobi? Maybe you have maybe Ryobi. That's a good one. I use saws. I like Ryobi. I'm just getting proficient on them. So you bought a Ryobi circular saw? Yeah. Okay. What color? Do you like that green blue color? Yeah, I think that's right. Okay, what else did you buy? That's it. Okay. Do you have a receipt for that? I don't. I mean, it's. I do. Um. It's like um. I have to put it on the company account because I don't have like a card or. Anything. So what's the company account? What do you tell them? It's just like text to confirm. Well, then I give them my cousin's phone number to confirm it, and then he presses a... What's your cousin's phone number? So I, can I don't know without my phone. What's your cousin's name? I forgot to ask. Kevin Roach. How do you spell Roach? R-O-A-C-H. Okay. And do you know his phone number? I'm sorry, I just asked you that. <laughs> Correct me if I say something I shouldn't, all right? So Kevin Roach, where's he lived? How old is he? 30 something. Okay. What? The reason I found out I had this other Irish cousin up here and I needed the job real bad. So he's the one that owns the company. Mm-hmm. And what does he have a name for the company? Um, he won't, he won't anymore, apparently. No, it's the name of the company, as you know it. Before that. No, okay, yeah. I would no, I was saying he won't hey, well clearly he's gonna be fucked. Everyone's gonna be affected by this. Okay. But it's called uh, wolf dog remodeling. S- say that again. Wolf dog remodeling. Wolf dog, that's a wolf dog. He has a wolf dog remodeling. Okay. Man, not that. Does he have an office or does he work out of his home? Oh, uh-huh, he doesn't have an office yet. He's... Okay. Now is he the one that sometimes rides with you? To the job, I think you mentioned that when you go to work, sometimes there might be somebody going with you. No, never. Never. You're always alone. Sometimes at the job. And I'm always He's at the, the job. job. Okay. And today you said you came there alone. Mm-hmm. You did some work and then you ended up here. The soul broke and I had to go get it. And then on the way, the lady did something, flipped my switch and, you know, and that happened and I, you know, and get the circular saw and back to work. Okay. So she flipped your switch. So she did. That's, you know, in, you. in whatever comparable, like, mental terms there are for okay. that. Like, well, is it fair to say that she, that some pissed you off or it angered you? I hear a lot of people say that. I don't, I don't, I don't, 
know what I was thinking. Can you tell me about what you, where you went after uh, Lowe's? I went back to finish uh, finish pulling up a floor. Okay. Are you working in a residence or a mm-hmm. commercial building? Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. And you don't know the address of that? No. Is it in Westminster? Yeah. Okay. How long were you there? Today specifically. Well, is this after the shooting that you went over there or early in the morning? At which point? I had to bring the saw back and get the saw. Set oh, okay. So you took the saw back to the house. Gotcha. And then... You're telling me you worked there for a little bit. I finished you up work and I didn't know what else to do. Wasn't yeah. positive. So how long did you stay there? Uh, maybe another hour or so. Okay. And where'd you go after that? I went home or I tried to go home. Which route did you take to go home? Um, the GPS took me all over the place. I think it was. You start on 36, and then um, 325, and then like 40 or something. Because I think the officer stopped you on Interstate 25. Yeah, that's, that's right. the main one that would take you down to your house, Greg. Right? Mm-hmm. Okay. At what point, I don't think I asked you this, did you put the gun in the trunk? Oh, I think that was uh, well, the lowest part. At Lowe's? Tell me about, where did you park at Lowe's? I don't know. Just in the parking lot, uh, kind of far from the building. Okay. And where, what did you do uh, when you put the gun in the trunk? Well, put it in the trunk and then went into Lowe's to get my uh, circular saw. Okay. And then... After you went to the house and worked for an hour, hour and a half, you decided to drive home. Did you stop off and eat anywhere? Or no, I wish any I had. Stops? No. Okay. And then, did you make any stops before the police stopped you? No. Okay. I think I asked you before, but do you have spare ammunition at your house for this gun? And if so, where do you keep it? No, just the magazines that are with it. So you got the magazines with it. Do you have... You know, a lot of people have like a box of ammunition or cans of ammunition. I don't want it. Can. So you don't have any ammunition at home? Nope. Okay. Do you have like a gun case, a gun box for it? At home, do you keep it in a case or a safe? Um, normally, I don't keep it in a box. Um, I think I got the Glock box with it, though, under my bed somewhere. Now, you told me earlier you bought it at a pawn shop and you didn't get a box with it. So you so you did get a box with it. Yeah. I got um the box that came with it. Okay. And that's under your bed? Mm-hmm. Okay. Any other guns in there? No, that's my only gun. Okay. All right. Is, is that box the one that matches the serial number and all that with the gun? Was it? Sure. Right. I know that's how they do that. Have you ever taken uh, courses on how to shoot a handgun? or have you, What kind of targets do you shoot at when you shoot that gun? Like a standard, uh, standard one. Like a human silhouette? Yeah. Like a human, human body target? Okay. And... Uh, and you said you've gone to that range a couple of times? I only went, try to make myself sound better than I am. I only went shooting once. Okay. How many times did you shoot there? Once. One time. Or how many rounds? Yeah, how many rounds? Four, like, like 400 or something. Wow. That many? Yeah, it was fun. You must be a good shot. Apparently not. So 400 rounds. Wow. Well, that's expensive. Yeah, I can't go shooting a lot because I, you know, ground sound right. Yeah. So when you're shooting the the target, what what do you shoot for? Uh, 
like uh, on the silhouette, the human silhouette. What part of the silhouette do you aim for? Depends. Uh, center, like chest, chest and head are the main ones. Okay. But mostly focusing on the chest. Okay. Show me how you shoot. Do you shoot one-handed or two-handed? Like that? Something like that. Okay. Okay. Is that uh, the easiest way for you to shoot? Uh, well, my friend is like studying to be like an FBI agent, and I went shooting with him, and he showed me that particular. Okay. Okay. Uh, um. Is there any way I could use the restroom and then continue? Absolutely. I put this out here. Sometimes people like to write down things, you know, that happen. Sometimes it's easier for them. I know you're having trouble remembering, but you seem to be really be a lot more relaxed right now. Is that a fair assessment? Just accepting. You're accepting this now? Yeah, oh, yeah, I guess I have, I have to. But, uh I the more the more you guys look into my life, the more you'll you'll see. I was just someone that had a fucking gun. Did you ever express these feelings to your doctor? About weapons? No, because simultaneously I'm afraid of being locked up. Did he ever tell you he wanted to lock you up? No. He's always afraid of being killed or thrown in the mental. Dude, did you want to get locked up? Do you know what a, a mental health evaluation is? Uh, I've heard of it, and I mean, the truth is that I've known that I, <laughs> I need a thorough one for years, and I've been I just have like an ego problem and I don't necessarily want the doctor to know how fucked up I am. Okay. Looking back, that was a huge mistake. So by not talking to a doctor and having an ego, what does that allow you to do in life? Would you say you got an ego problem? Yeah, like it would hurt my my vision of myself to tell a doctor the like, full extent, like how 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 bad things are, but it's tough to put in the words. Kind of, I feel like they kind of just want to group you into put you like he wanted to look at me and say, okay, you know, Jeremy, just but. The, Whose idea was it for you to get help? It's a combination. Uh, so, leading up to, uh, I've been having a. Was it just yours, or did someone else suggest you see him? I mean, everyone. Um, I thought honestly that my brother and my dad were going to force me to get help after my dog. After I put her down last August, didn't happen. Came close to December, and then I decided I had to go to AA because I can. I thought it was. I thought the alcohol was compounding and making worse a lot of issues. So I went there. I don't remember what we're talking about. Okay. 
Let me, I, I'm going to change this topic a little bit, but after this whole thing happened, it, when did you realize that the police would be looking for you? Was it as soon as you left? I figured, um, you know, eventually, I didn't know when, they just figured they'd, you know, they'd do their job. What were your plans in your mind after that, as far as what you were going to do, knowing the police were going to get on to you? Well, just kind of go home and see my cat for the last time. Maybe eat something. Breathe fresh air. So when you said you're going to go there for the last time, what did you think was going to happen? Say we're going to, they're going to get. What were they going to get you for? For what? From that. Okay, for shooting those people. Yeah. So you it didn't feel real, but it gradually. So you knew the police were going to catch up to you, and you knew that you would be held accountable for shooting those people. Is that a fair assessment? Of course. Of course. Um, so you knew what you did was against the law at that point. Afterwards, yes, I. How soon afterwards did you feel that? I was back at work because the whole time I was, I just started questioning whether I had just imagined it. You know. Um, but on my way home, I saw the helicopter. Helicopter. And it was, uh, I just knew it was following me. What did you do when you saw the helicopter? Just driving. See if I can get on to see my cat where I have the. Where you have to what? I uh, well, Jeremy, I've got a uh, detective that wants to come in and show you something. Uh, and he wants to talk to you a little bit. He's been working with me on this. Okay. So his name is Mike Lynch, and he'll be in here in just a minute. Sure. No worries. And uh, feel free to eat there, right? And if you need more water, I'll get you another bottle of water, okay? Yes, please. I'll be coming in here in just a second. Mike Lynch. Hey, Jeremy. So, Jeremy, I've actually been watching the whole interview, so I've kind of watched you through this whole thing. I know what's been going on, so you don't have to repeat a lot of stuff. Yeah. I'm not going to ask you to repeat anything. A few things I want to ask you about, though. You're having a little bit of a difficult time trying to express your feelings about why you wanted to shoot these people. Right? I didn't feel... Um. I just feel like feelings aren't relevant. Something just took over, and I and it was like tunnel vision or walks, watching a movie or a dream. All my decision making stopped. 
But you made some conscious decisions about what you did this afternoon. How so? You followed a lady in a vehicle into a parking lot. You got out of your vehicle, you approached her with a handgun, and you shot her. That's a conscious decision, isn't it? I'll never make that decision. We did. It happened. Yes, it did. I didn't make the decision. What do you mean? Explain that to me. What do you mean you didn't make the decision? I don't feel like anything's... Isn't the truth of the matter that you got so pissed off at her for the traffic thing? Oh, no. Well, that's what made you mad. Oh, it wasn't. That happened 50 times a day. Well, it did it enough that you followed her. She cut in front of you in the traffic construction down there. You got pissed off at her. I mean, you already admitted in the interview earlier that you might have said something like, fuck you. So you got pissed off at her for cutting you off, right? Isn't that what prompted this whole thing? In fact, this isn't the first time you've had a traffic altercation when you've gotten out and yelled at a lady, is it? Sorry? This isn't the first time that you've had a traffic disagreement, altercation with somebody where you've gotten out and yelled at somebody. What do you mean? Has it happened before? Where you've gotten no, out no, and yelled? For absolutely. The first. This, whatever happened today is the first time... I've ever had a, um, like anything significant. Okay. Right. But it's kind of a pattern in your life, isn't it, that you get pissed off in traffic? People cut you off, people piss you off, you get mad at them? I think that's probably true for anybody, right? No, I don't think it is. I think there's a lot of people that drive with a mellow attitude knowing that traffic is going to be traffic and you just sit back and let it happen. But that's not your attitude, is it? Depends on the day. I, that's the attitude you described as the attitude I try to keep. That's what I've been working towards. Do you play a lot of video games? Not anymore. Did you used to? Yeah, when I was a teenager, I played video games. Been years? Uh, yeah, I can't really get into them anymore. So, I mean, I tried to play a couple new games, like, the beginning of the year, but I just can't enjoy them or anything. Do you go out on dates at all? Uh, no. How do you feel around women? Mm, kind of awkward, probably, is the thing. Okay. So you feel like you have a hard time talking to a girl? Sure. Nowadays, sure. Yeah. What did you think about when you hear about people who go into schools and shoot kids? I think they fit a very similar profile to me, and it's been scaring me for years now. So this is something that isn't new to you? This is something that you've been feeling for a while? It's something that I've been trying to Up ever happening, but I've made a couple fatal flaws in, um, in living my life, like getting into fear and paranoia and owning a gun and carrying it around. Um, What would you say to this woman if you were to stand in front of her today? Do you recognize her? She look familiar to you? Is that the lady from today? This is the lady that you put four bullets into. Tell her I'm sorry. You tell her you're sorry? Why? Why are you sorry? Because she well, you made a pretty conscious decision to try to kill her. I did not. You didn't? How is not fair. How is not following somebody in the parking lot getting out of the gun and shooting her and not a conscious decision? I don't think either you were I could. So 
That was something not. Well, what do you explain that to me? I don't understand what you're saying. Something not there. I wasn't there. It was just. So I think that's a cop out. Don't you? I mean, in reality, isn't that just a cop out? What is this? What, what made you do this today? Tell me what made you do this today. I don't know. I've been asking myself that for a long time. I know you have to have some explanation in your mind. There's some reasoning going on in your brain as to why you did this. Today. You made the conscious decision to buy a gun. You made the conscious decision to start carrying it with you. Right? For defense, I'm not for this. Why did you feel like you needed a gun for defense? Has anybody ever bothered you before? That's a scary part. The world's a scary place. You ever been assaulted or hurt? It's not your best. Well, why? What do you what do you care? This guy always pretends to care. What's the interesting dynamic here? What are you doing? What's your angle? I'm trying to figure out what's going on in your brain as to what made you do what you did. Are you today. a doctor? I'm not. I'm a detective. Okay. I've been a detective for a long time. This is an interesting dynamic with me having to show you pictures and trying to try to get some emotion out of you as to why you would kill some people. This young man right here, his name is Vaughn. That was his, that was her son. He was laying on the ground when he walked up past him and put a bullet right in his head. He's dead. You took this kid's life. Pay the price for that big time. What do you think that price should be? Hmm. What should that price be? I'm never gonna... You know, there's death, there's jail, there's a loony bin. All the three things that I've been just afraid of and trying to prevent. Well, what do you think this kid was feeling today? When? How he felt? Yeah. I was scared. I want you to paint a picture right now in your own mind about what happened this afternoon. Let me kind of help you paint that picture, okay? You're in a very angry state, swearing at a woman, pulling out a gun, shooting her. She's got three kids with her. You shoot two of her kids in front of her while she's still alive. That's not, a, that's not a very pretty picture, is it? No, I'm here. You're here where? At the police department? Is that, is that the, 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 the just results of what you just did? What do you mean just results? Well, is that what you expected to happen is after you did what you did today? You made a conscious decision to put the gun back in the backpack. Was that to try to hide it in case you got stopped? So why did you take the coward's way out and kill other people? I don't think you understand. I don't. And frankly, I don't. I don't think you understand the tragedy and the travesty that you've created for this family. I could understand it, but not feel it. So that's a problem. Do you have any remorse? Yes, I have remorse. About what you did today? I don't do anything to make it back. I don't accept that it happened. No, it happened. It's very real. This isn't a dream. 
You're not living in a dream world. This is a real world right now. And you killed a little boy, shot three other people. And the interesting thing is that, that this game you're trying to play about saying, you know, this, this whole attitude of there was a higher power making me do something or I didn't understand what I was doing. You saw the guy sitting in the truck and he had made eye contact with you. He made perfectly clear to you that he saw you shoot this lady. So what'd you do? You shot him too. Because you didn't want him to be a witness to what he just saw. That's not true. You're painting your own picture, man. Well, it's what happened. You're telling me that's not true? You're saying... Well, explain it to me. If I'm, if I'm painting my own picture, you tell me what the picture Why? How's that picture wrong? whole thing just happened so fast. Had no control. You had no control. You had all it the wouldn't control. have happened. You had all the control. You had all it the control. wouldn't have happened if I had control. You had all the control in the world over this thing this, this afternoon. You were the one that controlled this whole thing this afternoon. But never. I think this has been a fantasy of yours. One that I've been trying to prevent, and not this. This is just bullshit. It shouldn't have happened. No, it shouldn't have happened. I'll agree with you on that. It, got ha it happened because you got pissed off. It happened because I had a gun with me. I know it. Because you had a gun with you and you got pissed off. This wasn't a random lady you picked out of nowhere to go shoot. Her. This lady pissed you off. You didn't follow this lady into that parking lot and shoot her because she didn't do anything. You followed this lady into that parking lot because she cut you off. Right? No. That's not right? It's not right. She didn't cut you off? 50 people cut me off in a day. Well, why did you choose her to go kill her, though? I didn't choose anyone. Well, you, she's she's the person that ends up with bullets in her. I guess I'm just trying to get a little honesty out of you. What you think is honest. What I think is honest. All right. What do, you, in your head. what do you think is honest? Oh, I don't like this adversarial questioning. This guy was better at your job. All right. um, I don't know. Because you, you finally don't like a little pressure put on you about what you're being held responsible for and what you're going to be held responsible for. I don't know what you want from me. We trying to get back at somebody today? Oh, okay, no. You know, we talked to your mom? Yeah. What kind of relationship do you think you have with your mom? Uh, distant. I go distant. How about your dad? Dad's in South America. Oh, for years. Does he work for the military? He is anti money laundering specialist. I don't. He doesn't work for the military, but he does a lot of like government type stuff. And he's in Brazil. Do you have a relationship with him at all? Recently, it's been. We didn't for a long time, and uh, recently we've been preparing it. What would my mom say? I think she's pretty disappointed in you. Yeah, well, that's for sure. Surprise, though. That doesn't surprise you. 
No, I'm asking if she was surprised. Oh, she said. We didn't tell her exactly what had happened. Yet. Okay. Actually, the media had already called her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was that your, was this part of your goal was to become famous? My goal was to get through the work day and go home today and see my cat and wake up tomorrow and do the same thing and then sign a new lease on a on a house on Saturday. Which was a struggle, but I came up figured out the deposit and so what's your long term goal? What was your long term goal? Did you have any? Sorry? Did you have any? No, I mean, my goal more recently, because I don't, my goal has just been to try to find happiness. If it's elusive. So you couldn't find happiness, so you thought you'd go out and inflict enough terror on somebody's family to ruin their lives? Absolutely not. I didn't plan anything. I didn't have any intentions. My only intention today was to work my balls off, tearing up a fucking floor for too little money, and then and just drive home and go to sleep and wake up tomorrow and do it again. Gradually, things will get better as long as I do the next right thing. Oh, it... Tell some lady cuts you off in trouble. how the timeline went, you know, but it's fucking retarded. Cause... Yeah, I didn't know. It was like a drank a lot of alcohol. I took a lot of Robitussin. I tried. We must not have tried very hard. Yeah, I'm not hard enough, maybe. Most people, when they try to commit suicide and don't do it, are just trying to get attention. We're seeking attention. Is that what you were doing? Oh, there might be some. Oh, that, but what I really wanted at the time was to die, but that I wasn't, wasn't sure what would come next. So I figured maybe I can salvage this life. You weren't sure what would come next, meaning what? Heaven, hell, nothingness. So maybe there is a real hell, and that's what scared you off? No, it was nothingness. I didn't believe, I don't believe in any hell other than this one here on Earth. The one that we're living in. So do you want me to believe that you're insane? I don't care what you believe, because I don't like you. Okay, but I'm just trying trying to draw this thing out a little bit. So we'll try to figure out what happened today. What I want is truth and justice. So all of the information will come forward. You want truth and justice for who? For them, but also for me. She's fucking retarded. I just wish I locked myself up. Or didn't buy a gun. Those things me. So are you telling me that there were no voices in your head telling you to go kill somebody today? That's a very ridiculous way of putting in voices in your head. Well, maybe in your situation, I've got lots of people telling me they have voices in their head. Some people tell me they have voices in their head. Go tell them to go kill people. Did that happen to you? Do you have voices in your head? I 
I can't tell whether my voice or these other layers of thinking are. Um, this is kind of the type of thing I should talk to my doctor about. And uh, should have talked to my doctor about. I understand your perspective. Know what you're trying to do. Well, I'm trying to figure out if you're sane or not. I don't know where the um, the line is of insanity. Okay. Does having knowing the distance between right and wrong have anything to do with that? Yeah, it does. I just didn't feel like I was there. But you still say you're knowing the difference between right and wrong. Right now, yeah. First then, I didn't know anything. I didn't know where I was, who I was, what's going on, why this lady said this. And you weren't under the influence of any intoxicating beverages or liquor or drugs or anything else? No, I've been sober for two months now. Um, so you were just so enthralled with your anger over the traffic thing? I mean, that's what it looks like to me. Me too. That was part of it. But I mean, you, you made some for somebody to be insane. Okay, you made some really conscious decisions about things beforehand and then afterwards. That leads me to believe that that um, you actually knew exactly what you were doing today. I definitely didn't, so I wouldn't fucking do it. No way. Period. I wouldn't. You say I wouldn't do it. Well, who did it then? devil. So you're saying the devil made you do it? I'm saying I'm the devil. Just because he did such a heinous act? No, I've been the devil since I was born. Why? Is that the way your parents treated you? No, it's just all been revealed to me through lots of little clues. Like, um, Random lyrics and numbers and but come on, in reality you know that you're not the devil. No, I literally think that I'm the Antichrist. The Antichrist isn't the devil. Whatever. I'm all of them. But yet the devil won today. And I lost. And the devil lives inside of me. And now, you know, I'm trying to fight it. Your mom did say one, one thing that was fairly interesting. She said that you really have an anger issue. What? An anger issue. I've worked with anger problems. So she's right about that? Yeah. I get angry. Sometimes so angry to the point of losing control. It's not always anger that does that. But sometimes it is. Any external stimuli that's overwhelming. So you tell me, do you think you're insane? I do. I believe I'm fucked in the head. I believe that I should have been locked up in a loony bin. Well, why would they lock you up? 
what would you have done to make him lock you up? I'm not that sure that that's all that much insane. Okay. That was a lot of I just don't want to take the pain anymore. I wanted to kill you. Kill him. I can't differentiate real from not real. Do you know the difference between right and wrong? It's ambiguous. Like, but I feel what happened today was obviously wrong. But in general, that's a tough question, right or wrong. Because it's just right and wrong, and then there's pure evil. Today was pure evil. Today was pure evil. Did you do this to prove to the world and your doctor that you get problems? Fuck oh, no. My God, no. All I wanted was to build a decent life for myself. When she pissed you off, I'm, is that what you were thinking? I'm going to show her. No, I wasn't thinking any. You had to raise that gun and point it at her and pull the trigger several times. Very conscious decisions. Several steps and processes to do that. It just doesn't happen in a snap of a finger. No, maybe the answer is somewhere in between. Maybe. I am fucked in my head. You guys can't convince me that I'm not insane. How old are you? I'm three. And yet you've gone through 23 years of life and never done anything wrong? I'm plenty wrong. You you guys will find out. Well, you don't have a criminal record. Yeah. Because, you know. Well, how are we going to find out if you haven't been arrested? Who's going to come forward and tell me the things you've done wrong? All right. So who should I talk to that's going to tell me these things? Oh, I see. My bad. Um... My brother's probably the person to talk to. Who could do the best full picture of what I'm like? What's your brother's name? Andy. You live around here? No, he lives in Boston. So it's like the same thing as yours? Yes. Do you know his phone number? Off the top of my head, it's in my phone, though. Mm -hmm. Do you have a passcode on your phone? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your phone was it on your person when they arrested you, or is it in your car somewhere? No, they have it. They got it when they arrested you. Can I get that uh, second bottle of water, please? Yeah. But he knows me better than I know myself. Andy. Yeah. So your only only sibling? No, he's like my favorite. What other brothers and sisters do you have? I have an older sister in Ithaca, and I have What's a her name? Nancy. With do you have a Facebook page? Uh, yeah. No, I don't think it's public. Does she live in Ithaca? Yeah, Ithaca, New York. Do you get along with her? Yeah. Go to, I was going to go to her wedding in August. Any other siblings? Uh, half sister, Fernanda. My dad's. Uh, Where's she at? New Jersey with my dad and my mom. So your mom and dad are separated and your dad's remarried and now this woman that he's now with has had a daughter with him. That's correct, yeah. You don't know that anymore? I'll stop your head. I know my dad's numbers. Can we get that? That's not what. Did we get that? No. What are dad's numbers? Nice. Not mine. Your dad's name again was what? Kevin. 
He's fought. Yeah. But he's the one to talk to if you want to fight. You're not going to like him because he just thinks I'm fucked in the head. Like, he was so proud of me for trying to get help and we were repairing our relationship. Just in the, so that, is that all your siblings then? Yeah. No girlfriends? Nope. Any boyfriends? Nope. You ever been arrested for anything? Do you ever do illicit drug, illegal drugs? I don't know. Other than marijuana? Rarely. I, like, in the past I've done, like, uh, mushrooms once or twice. Maybe, no, a handful of times. Um, on cocaine, like, twice. Orange you go to school? Yeah. Um, well, I started, I came here to go to school, and I started drinking, and when I started drinking, I immediately started losing my mind. And then, uh, timeline kind of progressed. Like, I, I just drank too much and didn't go to class, and I thought I would be able to redo it, you know, but um, um, my dad didn't want to, uh, want to help with that. He didn't want to pay a bill if that's what you're going to do? Well, for sure. Definitely didn't want me just wasting it. Um, so he had offered that, like, if I could go and pass, that he would that he would reimburse me, but I haven't been able to. What were you studying? Uh, business. Before that, I studied a little psychology. Is that UC? Or not UC? Uh, no, class, I didn't, that's the thing. I didn't really... I was at a community college in New Jersey, and then I transferred here. Um, what made you come to Colorado? My best friend always wanted to come to Colorado Springs. And the, uh, it's just where all the young people are coming. The mountains are nice. You ever been here before you moved here? Just to visit, to set up, move actually. So there's nobody here that you were actually coming out here for? No, I have my dog. With me. So other than the construction you're doing now, you held any other job? This cousin you're talking about, is he your, your real cousin or is that just what you call him? No, he's not. He, our grandmas are buried head to head. My grandma and his grandma are sisters. So, so like second cousins or something, but cousin by blood for sure, no doubt. So he gave you a job? Yeah. I needed it real bad. And you don't know his number? Not off the top of my head. My phone. What's his name? Kevin Roach. So your dad's name is Kevin and his name is Kevin? He's actually named after my dad. Well, what are you thinking right now? What do you think's going on? I'm uh, afraid of getting killed. What? Right, that's the I you know. So I'm never able to. I don't want to die. Uh, a walking contradiction. Cognitive Well, you know, some of the language and some of the ideas, like the psychology that you've studied, obviously you've read up a little bit of that. Yeah, I was always wondering if I could learn about kind of what's wrong with me. When did you first realize there was something wrong with you? Like three years old. Well, I don't think you recognize it at three. Well, my parents did. I saw a psychologist since I was two or three because my parent, a psychologist told my parents that I was suicidal as a three-year-old. This is how used. Yeah, New Jersey. So. Do you feel like you got picked on in school? No, I kind of could have been picked on, but Oh, I found a weird niche where no one, no one ever messed with me. 
I was pretty nice to most people. You know? I didn't cause trouble or get in fights. You know, mostly wasn't a bully, but you know, I remember sometimes that I was a bully. Did your parents uh, discipline you? No, most, I think mostly not. I think like in their own way, you know but not physically and not like a lot of groundings or... So you didn't feel like you were abused? Not physically abused. I was, you know, maybe a little neglected in certain ways, but it was not. So there's no physical abuse that you're looking back on and saying, I got some post-traumatic stress going on because I was abused as a kid. Why would I talk about that? Because the last guy that killed somebody told me that. I thought I'd ask it. Now, uh, maybe there have been some things, uh, Do you think you're a sociopath? Some, some there, some varying. I see. I love animals. Anyway, so. So you don't find yourself abusing animals or watching them die or anything uh, like no, that? No, I love animals. I want to save all the animals. Just people you don't like, huh? Well, in general, I guess, but I can really try and. Do you ever have imaginations or visions of becoming a serial killer? To what, to what extent? Like, like picturing yourself? Or? Yeah, so something you've ever fantasized about, being a serial killer. Getting away with killing people. Sociopaths don't have a lot of re regret feelings. I have trouble with some. I feel a lot of stuff. I just have trouble putting it into words sometimes. I feel disconnected from things, but I know. So it's hard for me to understand how you can kill somebody and, and say you still have feelings. It goes back to just, just I lost myself. I wasn't there. No presence of mine. But yeah, you could drive a car. You could follow traffic laws. You could keep from getting in an accident. I can do that in my in driving stride. Did you actually after you shot these people go back to the house and go back to work? Or did that actually happen before the shoot? Oh, I had to finish work. I wasn't, I didn't know what to do. I knew, you know, the cops would be looking for me, but I'm just so exhausted. I don't, I'm not thinking straight. But you did. Is that what you're telling me? You went back to work and finished your job? Yeah, I wanted to finish and I like, wanted everything to just go away. Anything you want to say to us now that we're about done? You never really did answer the question. What is justice out of this for this family? Like I said, I'll die or I'll go to jail forever or I'll... Um... No, that's, that's the consequences. What's the justice out of this for this family? For them? What do you mean? What's their justice? Kind of problem, right? So they don't have any justice out of this whole thing after what you've done. Well, I don't know how they. You know, I. Uh, I don't. I don't know. 
No. You got anything else you want to say? You guys don't understand. That's all. I feel anything to take this all back. I was trying. I was trying to be a better person, a different kind of person. Not someone that would do this in a million years. I lost myself. I wasn't. I wasn't there. I wasn't present. In becoming insane slowly but surely, I think it's I think it's schizophrenia or schizoaffective, but nothing. Uh, ultimately, they shouldn't have happened. You know, I uh, well, you know, you're right about one thing. What well, they shouldn't have. Happened. And I think you're you're going to be caught out trying to justify your mind why this is I don't expect you to see my mind. Well, yeah. Okay, you ask me what's going to happen. You're going to go to the Adams County Jail tonight. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be charged with murder and attempted murder. And then from there, when do I get like a hearing or when can I call for a lawyer? They'll, you'll be notified by the, the judge after you're formally charged and you'll be given some information that will let you know. Okay. Okay. Anything else you want to tell me? I just don't like, like I know. I, uh, I'm sorry, they want me to ask you what your phone is about. Who's the carrier on that? Oh, Xfinity Mobile. Is it under your name? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Hang out, all right? Uh, when do I get a phone call? When they take you over to the booking room and take a photograph of you and that, there's a phone in there, we'll let you, you can make your calls there. Okay. Right. Who do you want to call? Probably my mom.
Me again. Turn face the wall. Oh, I got the handcuff there. You done puking? Yeah. Move that away. Sorry about that. I don't know if there are any pens or anything that you got. Alright, not this way, man. <laughs> 